Hello! We're going to be looking at and disassembling the Sony WM-EQ3. This is a nice little tape recorder, um, tape player, that I picked up recently, and this one's a little bit damaged, a little bit, um, needs work on the inside. It needs a new electronics board. Uh, everything else I think is fine, but I just decided this is a good chance to take this apart, put up a video of how it looks on the inside and what I like about it. Now this is, uh, the EQ3 is a um, a Walkman that has, um, this is glow in the dark. These uh, opaque plastics are glow in the dark. They'll charge up and shine in the night. I think I personally like the EQ2 a little bit more because it makes all of the shells um, clear so you can like see the electronics board through this um, just looks a little better and on the on the two and the others these are clear buttons I think these are white probably so that you can see them in the dark a little bit better uh, but still very nice player love the look of it good work Sony now um, we're gonna take this off. We've got these um, really nice tactile buttons on the little bits on the back, little standoffs there, so it'll sit flat and just slightly off the table. The inside of the the actual tape reservoir, no, oh, yeah, there's a um, you've got these little dot patterns here, just add a really nice little texture to it. Um, let's see if I can get up close enough for you to see but those extend all the way back in there. Um, we've got these two clips, a clip on either side to hold the tape. Ideally I think you're supposed to slide the tape in here and then shut the device, but um, those clips will also, and then it'll hold the tape as, as you open it up again. But you can also just put the tape in flat and close it and those will snap around the tape and lift it when you open the shell. Um, with the clear plastic, we can see these little restrictors in the back side. Um, those hook onto points on the plastic. Yeah, the um, the metal gives a nice little green tint to light coming through there. So disassembly. This is the battery compartment. This unit has uh, the negative terminal, but it is missing the positive terminal. Uh, for taking the back off you've got these two pins here you've got this also just a physical restrictor but we're going to very gently slide this to the side and clear the pin that way and it'll just lift out like that uh, and now we've got some plastic bits here those don't actually touch this shell uh, they touch the electronics board on the inside but we've got snaps all around the edge of the board here. And I found the best way for me to open this is to gently pry here to get it started. And it's gently lifting out. Okay. And um, whichever way works for you is probably best, but you want to gently work your way around the side. There's a lot of little clips around here. There's a couple here. Um, we're going to ever so gently got a couple here on the, around the front, the front face here and it should eventually this is the easiest that it's gone for me so far um, and taking it apart once or twice probably helps with that um, but this lifts off before we get to the, the board We've got the inside here. We've got these little standoffs that'll actually contact bits of the board to keep it um, together. We've got a little divot here and here, little carve outs for um, a couple little bits on the bottom there. Those would be this section. The carve out is protecting there. And it's also, yeah also protecting this little plug. Now, as you can see, 
this board is not doing so well. It's very corroded. That's all of the white discoloration, and the white and blue that's kind of creeping in here. Might be from battery acid, I don't know. But um, I believe the other side of the battery terminal should come in here. But you can see that also repairs have been made to like add little bare wires to try and skip over the corrosion, I believe. Um, and then a nice little friendly face right there. This should have a retainer pin in it, some sort of um, some sort of black plastic um, piece, because otherwise uh, pressing the buttons will cause will kind of cause the board to shift around slightly. But we've got for retainer pins we have this sort of rivet which should be here. We've got these two plastic pieces little clips and we need before take going any further we need to take this out and this switch this plug works gently like that sliding those forward this should just lift out easily like that now you don't want you want to take care about contacting this you don't want anything to like bend that very much uh, but after that's gone, after this is out, um, gently pressing these forward and lifting. And let's see under the board where we've got these, this little diagram for the mechanical bits where the belt should go. And uh, little pieces of information for us. Again, I I think this board is gone. This board is shot. Um, but it should... I wonder if you could create a new one. I wonder if you could order a new one and get the... the um, get the chip numbers and possibly make one of yourself, one of your, on your own to get this actually back on its feet. Um, oh, also on the board there is this um, little opening, little cavity, little mechanical switch, and that should... that talks to this pin. I'm not sure... not sure what this does, but it might be part of the ejection. Hmm. On this board, um, this switch here between the... Um, shows you the what tape type uh, this switch has seized that's completely inoperable um, yeah. uh, this for letters on the chips uh, this one says BHRM we've got sorry for flipping this up but these are all All these little fuses and things have very tiny lettering. I I don't know. You might have to f buy one of these to find out one of the scans, um, or you know, to, to figure out what these are if you wanted to replace them or something. This one says LB1674. The second line says 7Z8. And this chip over here is A45858VX1. Hope that helps if you're looking into that sort of thing. On the other side of the board, we've got C303 up here. We've got C er, C312. This is J301HP. This is a C306. C203, C103. Uh, this switch on here is S304 AVLS Norm Limit. This is S303 Tape Norm Metal. And this rocker, this volume switch says RV301. This one is S301 Power. That's about all I got for you. You can see the, um, you might be able to see the dot pattern a little bit clearer through this. Um, 
but that is about it for this device. I hope hope you liked taking a look at this with me. Uh, I hope this helped you out. Let's put this back together. Whoa. So we're going to put this little cable gently back into its plug. Slide that closed to make them contact. Make sure these are snapped in properly. Yeah, I don't have the post here, but this is probably about the time you'd put it back on for... Oh, if you wanted to... Sorry. If you wanted to get the clamshell actually off of this, this is where you would attack that. Um, I'm not going to, but there actually there are little slits here, little pieces of plastic that you could get some kind of spudger in and push those push those together and you could take this directly off uh, taking care not to get hung up on the little clip sides there but if you're trying to put one of these together service it put new belts on good luck go slow you know Enjoy.